Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can hear me. My name is Mackenzie Smith, and I'm the University Librarian and Vice Provost of Digital Scholarship here at UC Davis. It is my great pleasure to welcome you all to the 2020 Lang Prize Awards Ceremony, held virtually for the first and hopefully last time. I'm really sorry that we can't all be together at Shields Library this year to celebrate this year's awardees, but I hope that you are all safe and well at home, and I thank you for joining us. The Lang Prize recognizes undergraduate students who have made exceptional use of the library resources for a research project. By highlighting excellence in undergraduate research, we hope to inspire more students to explore the vast resources available to them through the library. But before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of the students who applied, even as the campus was closing unexpectedly this spring, the committee who judged the many wonderful applications, and the library team who organized this virtual event. And of course, Norma Lang and the Lang family, without whom there would be no prize. We are honored to have a representative of the Lang family here with us today. So let me briefly introduce him to you and invite him to say a few words. Andy Lang is the nephew of the late Professor Emerita Norma Lang, for whom the prize is named. It's thanks to a generous gift she left to the library that we were able to create this prize. Professor Lang taught botany here at UC Davis for nearly 30 years and is warmly remembered for two passions, her dedication to her students and her love of the research process. Andy was able to join us remotely from where he's sheltering in place to share a few words about his aunt. Thank you, Andy, and welcome to the virtual UC Davis. Okay, it's just requested that I unmute. Hopefully you can hear me. Yes, we can. Very good. Um, gosh, what a special, special occasion. I really uh, appreciate your comments. I think uh, uh, it's unfortunate that we have this particular challenge, but on the other hand, as I commented to one of your colleagues a little while ago, this is very exciting to uh, uh, go through this Zoom exercise and it seems to be working extremely well. Uh, thanks to all the participants, all those who uh, uh, entered this, um, past and present. Uh, I've enjoyed this uh, um, this event. I think this is number four now, and the annual award of uh, the Norman J. Lang Student Research Prize. Special thanks to McKinsey, uh, Antoinette Ayanas, Beth Callahan, Jane Fortner, and many others in the library who have made their own contributions to another uh, wonderful Lang Prize event. This has become such a wonderful tribute to the legacy of my late aunt, Professor Norma J. Lang. With some quick background, she was the younger sister of my late father and daughter of Dave and Mary Lang. Her father was a freight agent for the B&O Railroad starting in Dallas and working his way to Toledo, Ohio. Norma was born along the way in Memphis, Tennessee. She started her collegiate work at Bowling Green University and finished her, finished her degree in biology at a high state university in Columbus. Then to Indiana University for her doctorate and her educational training continued with postdoctorate work at the University of Texas, which happens to be my alma mater. So uh, to some degree, we kind of keep all these things in the family. From UT, uh, University of Texas, she joined, the U, joined UC at Davis where she remained for the remainder of her teaching career of nearly 30 years. And during that time, she disting distinguished herself in teaching and research. Her research was leading edge in its time in the use of electron microscopy for structure analysis of algae and specifically blue-green algae. She was recognized for her research studies and leadership with numerous awards that you can find in her biography. But what I wanna highlight here is her love of teaching and working with students. She was known for being very demanding, sometimes with a bit of an edge, pushing her students to high standards, but also known for having a kind uh, personality and generosity to those who wanted to engage in her teaching. After retiring from UC Davis, she continued teaching by supporting adult literacy, largely to disadvantaged women at the Woodland Library in Yolo County, she held a very strong conviction for giving back to the community and society from which she was afforded such rewarding opportunities. 
and the message I wish to leave with you today is to remember the great opportunity you have been provided by this outstanding educational institution, UC Davis. As you secure your future success, remember UC Davis, and selfishly, I'd love to see you help grow this wonderful endowment, the Norman J. Lang Student Research uh, Endowment. Congratulations to all of you, appreciate your hard work, and I look forward to uh, your presentations, and I wish you the best in your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Hi, I'm Beth Callahan. I am the AUL Associate University Librarian here at UC Davis Library, and I am just tickled pink to be part of this Norma J. Lang Prize for Undergraduate Information Research. I'd like to introduce Carolyn Thomas, who's with us today to share welcoming remarks. Carolyn is Professor of American Studies and Vice Provost and Dean for Undergraduate Education here at UC Davis. She works in collaboration with more than 60 team members across our colleges and divisions and works directly with students and faculty to achieve the undergraduate education's vision that UC Davis have the strongest learning environment of any research university in the, in the nation. She has previously served as an undergraduate and graduate faculty advisor, a department chair, director of the UC Davis Humanities Institute, and convener of a UC system-wide humanities consortium. As a faculty member, Carolyn's research has explored how technological innovation and food production, combined with marketing and advertising, impact Americans' definition of health. She has been featured on NPR and the BBC for her award-winning book, Empty Pleasures, the story of artificial sweetener from saccharin to Splenda. Here we are with Carolyn. Thank you very much, Carolyn, for joining us. Thank you, Beth, and thank you, Andy, for those great remarks, and hook'em horns. Um, <laughs> we all have that in common, you, me, Norma. Um, one of the things that I'm really proud of about UC Davis, just what we are as an institution, is that our undergraduate students have incredible opportunities to do research. And you just see this repeatedly, right? We bring our students in and they face the challenges that they face in class. They learn that material. And so many of them, often because they have a professor, like Professor Lang, they can go beyond the information they're given and they learn to ask their own questions. And we have several different fantastic environments at UC Davis, right? There's the lab, there's the creative studio, there's thinking through questions that are close historical questions and questions that are sociological that require tons of data. And what so many of those kinds of research opportunities have in common is that they start for students and often end in the library. And if we were in the library space together and not virtual, I would at this point gesture to the glass doors of the special collections. I don't know, they'd probably be on my left if I was standing where we stand in the library. And, and I would say that, right, those special collections for me are the heart of my second and favorite book. And I think for so many of us, the library is that portal to know something that is so far unknown. And what's so great about students in the library is that it's this complex system, right, where you level up. You can start out, you can discover databases, you can kind of learn to manage what you don't know and get excited about knowing more and maybe ultimately diving into, you know, real and old, old piles and, and even rare manuscripts. And so to do that, though, you have to have a guide. And that's so frequently the form of research librarians and the research and the staff in the library. And it's a place where you can see just how much UC Davis believes in supporting students. If we could walk into the library, you would see them all over the place. And even now, while we've been closed, the library, that 24-hour reading room has been the solace, the place where students can come, they can sit, and they can have a physical infrastructure, a space for learning, even while so many of us have to be away. This is what's so fantastic about the Lang Prize, right? It, it exemplifies the fact that faculty have their demands and they support our students. And so often that work takes them through the library and the library is the source of building confidence 
to be able to ask your own questions. And how awesome is it that there's so many of our students that do research that we can even have a category here for first year students doing library research, right? It's not just that you wait until you're a senior. The library is the space where students end up. And it's because the mentors on campus encourage them that their own voices matter. I wanna to thank today all the members of the university, the faculty, the librarians, the teaching assistants, the instructors, and all kinds of other mentors who spend countless hours and really impart their personal passion to students so that they can pursue a question beyond the bounds of what's known. If you're able to read the students' application essays, you can see what an impact these individuals have had. And it's people like Norma Lang who spent nearly 30 years teaching these students to ask these questions. And it's what makes it so perfect that that legacy continues in this prize, because that's really the spirit here. It's that the university has opened doors to the faculty and the faculty open those doors next to the students. And the bridge between those two places are often those knowledge makers, the guides who help students find where the information lies and find the fortitude within to handle the stop and start, the sometimes discouraging process, and the always rewarding final conclusion of research where you found the answer to something that truly matters. And so with that, I'm just so happy to be here to welcome all of you and to now move towards recognizing our students where we can really see that spirit of UC Davis made real in the next generation of question askers. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carolyn. It, we can tell these are heartfelt remarks and we truly appreciate your thoughts on and welcome. So before we hear from our, our students, I'll ask you to share your congratulations and praise for a, well, a job well done in the chat feature of the Zoom. Please also use speaker view for the best experience of the Zoom um, virtual meeting. We have a number of presentations today and we won't have time for more than a brief overview of each project. For today's event, we want to make sure that the spotlight is on our students and their stories. If you want to know more about one or more of the students' projects, check out the copy of the, their projects on the Lang Prize Winners Projects page on the library's website. So here we go. To begin the award presentation, we have a prize for first year undergraduate writing. And I'm pleased to present the prize to Stephen Fujimoto. Stephen's project was completed in fall of 2019 for the Religious Studies course, Myth, Ritual, and Symbolism. Stephen's sponsor is Professor Naomi Janowitz, who is in the Religious Studies department. Stephen, let's hear from you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for that introduction. Um, I'm Stephen Fujimoto, and my paper analyzes modern day internet memes alongside classical myths. Um, that might sound a little strange, but get, uh, stay with me here. Memes, for those who aren't aware, are funny images or phrases that spread online through people sharing them with each other. Um, and one meme that was popular last fall was OK Boomer, a snarky retort by my generation uh, towards condescending comments uh, from older adults, such as millennials these days spend way too much of their money on avocado toast. Um, but this generational hostility is nothing new, right? Uh, if we look back, all the way to ancient myths, uh, we see a similar generational hostility appear in stories about father and son relationships. Um, one of the most infamous examples, and the example I personally analyzed in detail in my paper, is the story of Oedipus. Uh, if you've read it, you'll know that the story kicks off with Oedipus's father, Laius, trying to kill him as a baby uh, to prevent a prophecy that foretold Oedipus would replace him from coming true. Uh, so my paper centers around viewing the OK Boomer uh, meme as a modern day myth and analyzing traditional stories about fathers and sons uh, to predict the possible outcomes of the general co generational conflict we see today. Uh, for this paper, I utilize several library resources uh, beyond just checking out some books. Uh, for example, I talked to Mr. Delgadilla, a resource librarian at Shields Library, who gave me tricks and tips to find helpful 
uh, sources since internet memes, unfortunately, have not been studied much in academia. Um, I also really appreciated his knowledge, his extensive knowledge of memes, even though that may not have been in his job description. Uh, the library, library's databases, such as ProQuest, were also crucial in finding articles and books that helped me shape my arguments and my overall thesis. And speaking of key sources, I just want to conclude with an idea that really stuck from me from one of the articles on the Oedipus story that I used really extensively in my paper. Uh, the ar author argues that there has been a lot of academic attention on Oedipus's actions towards his father. Uh, that's why everybody knows about the Oedipus complex, right? Uh, but however, there's been a noticeable lack of academic discussion on the messed up actions of Elias, who is technically a attempted baby murderer, right? Uh, if you know the story. And the author suggests that there may be a bias in, in this uneven attention uh, between Oedipus and Elias because, there's an, the, because of the academic sphere being dominated uh, and written from the perspective of, perspective of adults. Um, and however, right, through uh, the, UC Dave, sorry, the UC Davis Library through providing resources to students and organizing this competition and the Lang family uh, through their amazing generosity that makes this prize possible have made a way to recognize the young, the voices of the, sorry, the voices of young researchers such as myself and carve a space for my generation's ideas, uh, even if they are about internet memes. So all I can say is thank you. Ah, oh, thank you, Stephen. Okay, let's try this. Here's your certificate. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you, I got it. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you. Next, we recognize winners in our arts, humanities, and social sciences category. In third place for arts, humanities, and social sciences is Susanna Barone. Susanna's project was compiled in winter 2020 for her cinema and digital media course, Media, Innovation, and Community Development. Susanna's sponsor is Associate Dr Professor Jesse Drew, who is in the cinema and digital media department. Susanna? Hi, thank you so much, Beth. Um, hi, my name is Susanna Barron. I'm a student in the cinema and digital media department, and my research advisor is Professor Jesse Drew. I'd like to thank Professor Norma J. Lang and the Lang family for recognizing my research project, which examines um, how marketing of chlorine-based bleach products misrepresents the negative health effects that these products can cause, especially in underrepresented and marginalized communities. This research project is already helping me advance other projects like a documentary I'm currently working on about the custodians here on campus. Uh, exploring this topic is especially important to me since my parents worked in custodial work handling toxic chemicals for several years. I also worked in custodial work for about three years so that I could have the flexibility to go back to school. During that time, I used chlorine-based bleach products on a daily basis. So I had an enormous amount of passion to conduct my research, but I really didn't know exactly where to start. And if it wasn't for the resources available at UC Davis Library, I wouldn't have been able to develop this research project or expand my knowledge on this area of research. With the help of search engines, for example, library subject guides and databases, I was able to gather the information I needed. Through the research process, I feel like I've gained invaluable skills as a researcher like learning to ask for help from the experts, like the librarians at Shields Library. I'm actually incredibly thankful for the librarians at Shields for sharing their knowledge about the library and also making me feel welcome. As a first generation college student, it's easy to feel intimidated, intimidated by a large institution like UC Davis. But every time I entered Shields Library, I knew I could find the support that I needed to thrive. To end, I'd like to thank my advisor, Professor Jesse Drew and the McNair Scholar Program for their endless support. I'd also like to thank my family for their support, especially my parents, Cirilo and Maria Barron, who didn't have the opportunity to go to school but worked so hard so I could have the opportunity to an education. Thank you very much. Oh, great job, Susanna. And here is your certificate.
Thank you. Thank you so much. In second place on this category is Isabel Garum. Isabel's project was completed in winter 2020 as an independent study for anthropology. Isabel's sponsor is Assistant Professor Randy Haas, who is in the anthropology department. Isabel? Hello, everyone. My name is Isabel, and my paper is called Exploring the Historic Use of Animal Traps in the Andes and Their Lasting Effects on the Vicuña. First, I want to thank everyone who worked to put this virtual ceremony together, the Lang family, and also my professor, Dr. Randy Haas, who has been endlessly supportive and helpful throughout my research process. I am deeply honored to have been chosen and to be metaphorically standing alongside my incredible peers who have produced exemplary research. My research project began with the discovery of 300 previously unknown archaeological animal traps in the high Peruvian Andes that, when excavated, turned out to be from the historical era. These structures contained Vicuña bone, the possible wild ancestor of the alpaca, and likely supplied a large industry that operated during the colonial and post-colonial periods. My research set out to determine the extent of this Vicuña driving industry, what was being produced, and what the products, where the products were going, and what were the long-lasting effects. After doing my research, I was able to present a working political ecology model for the Vicuña textile industry that existed po uh, post-European contact. The majority of my project was reviewing any and all literature I could find about the vicuña and these traps uh, called chapus, and I was surprised to find that there was a lot less on this topic than I hoped, and it required a lot of finding sources and using sources within those sources, and there were many days where I had stacks upon stacks of articles and books to look through, um, but the library was invaluable to me, especially when it came to colonial accounts, which I was easily able to access and find through the ERAF archaeology database. Um, and it was very important that I not only use my academic sources, but also have supporting information from pri primary accounts written during the colonial era. Throughout this process, I learned that research is not straightforward. There's always new information to find. And while it might surprisingly alter the direction or the expected outcome of the project, it's always good to remain open to those changes. I also found there are always new questions to answer. And I look forward to continuing learning about this topic and seeing where it takes me. Thank you all for joining us in the ceremony. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate everyone's support throughout it. Great job, Isabel. And here, thank you so much for participating in our prize. <laughs> thank you. For first place in the arts, humanities, and social science is Michael Montgomery. Michael's project was completed in winter 2020 for his university right of writing program course, The Writing in History. Michael's sponsor is Melissa Bender, who is a continuing lecturer in the university writing program. Michael. Hi, everyone. My name is Michael. Uh, can, can you all see me? Um, OK, good. I, I can't see me, but I'm me, so it doesn't matter. Uh, my project is called Gary Snyder's Pleistocene Environmentalism. Uh, and I want to start by explaining what I mean by that title. Uh, so Gary Snyder is a poet and essayist uh, who taught at UC Davis for many years. And he's a well-known writer about nature and the environment. Uh, he won the Pulitzer Prize in 1975. Uh, and we were very lucky to have him as a faculty. Uh, many of his manuscripts, his journals, and his letters are in special collections in Shields Library. Uh, and for my research, I accessed the manuscripts and uh, had a great time with it. So um, that was one of the resources I used. Uh, I also checked out a lot of his books that they have on the fourth floor in Shields Library. Uh, I pretty much have ransacked that part of the shelf. It's, they're all temporarily uh, relocated for now. Um, I've been checking out his books there since 2018. This project I did in winter quarter was really kind of a, a much more uh, it was a much bigger scale. Uh, it was for the writing class, as Beth mentioned, but it's part of a larger project I'm working on for a senior thesis uh, in the university honors program that I call Living in the Glacial Landscape. And that focuses on Snyder's work and his references to the Ice Age. Uh, so that's the second part of the title, Pleistocene Environmentalism. Uh, the Pleistocene refers to that period in Earth's past when there was an Ice Age. And basically what I've been noticing uh, since I started reading Gary Snyder's poems and essays, I've been noticing that he refers to the Ice Age a lot. And um, it's something I'm interested in. It's a topic I'm interested in because I've learned about it in classes. I'm a marine and coastal science major and a writing minor. 
So uh, his references to the Ice Age were very inspiring to see um, someone bring in science in literature. Uh, and that's kind of what this project is about, is about how the science of the Ice Age can inform literature and how Gary Snyder, as one example, has made it part of his sort of environmental vision. Uh, he's a well-known kind of environmental activist and uh, the Ice Age is a, is a big part of his perspective. So that's what I call attention to in my paper and in my thesis. Um, I'm still working on that thesis now. So like I said, I still have the books checked out. I'm using the library's database remotely. Uh, it's a shame I can't be in special collections because I certainly would be, but I'm very grateful for um, the people there because they've actually sent me scanned in documents while we've been in sheltering in place from Snyder's letters and manuscripts. Uh, I've been in contact with Dan Goldenstein, whom I met uh, in the winter quarter. Uh, he's a research librarian uh, and he showed me some of the historical databases, uh, magazines, newspapers that have been a huge help. Uh, so I'd like to thank him, uh, the people in special collections, uh, Melissa Bender, my writing instructor, and also Scott Herring, uh, my thesis advisor, who's also in the university writing program. One of the, um, I guess I'll say something I'm, that struck me as um, especially fun, uh, like I said, I got to read Snyder's journals, and uh, some of them go back to when he was 18, so not far in age from us as students, and um, seeing the depth of his thought and the curiosity at such a young age, very inspiring for me, and I was, I'm really grateful to have seen that in the special collections in the Gary Snyder papers. Uh, so um, those are lessons I think that I, I mean, got, I'm incorporated in my studies, but they've also made me uh, a more kind of, I've rounded out my education and, and me as a person. And I've used the library in that process repeatedly. This, this project is just sort of the culmination. So I'm really grateful for the staff there and especially now the Norma J. Lang Prize. Uh, that is, I mean, I'm so glad I could share it with them because this project really is a UC Davis library project. So thank you all. Thank you so much, great job. Here you go. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. And, and moving to our next category, science, engineering, and math, I'd like to recognize our third place winner, Tara Allison. Tara's project was completed in fall of 2019 for her university writing, writing program, and it's writing in the discipline, biological sciences. Tara's sponsor is Matthew Oliver, who is a lecturer in the University Writing Program. Tara, let's hear from you. Hi, thank you, Beth. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Tara Allison, and my research project was about a mental health phenomenon affecting pediatric populations called Adverse Childhood Experiences, or ACEs. These are mentally and emotionally traumatic experiences that impact an individual before the age of 18 and lead to chronic illness later on in life during adulthood. These illnesses can include depression, heart disease, early mortality and suicide, risky health behaviors, decreased economic opportunity, and many more. The Surgeon General of California, Nadine Burke Harris, has made it her top priority for California to increase awareness of ACEs and mitigate the effects of them in adulthood. One thing I learned that really surprised me during this study was that women can, in some cases, be more adversely affected by ACEs than men in scenarios of abuse. I utilized the library extensively to help me identify papers to include in the literature review I wrote. The review discusses the biological basis of ACEs and a proposal for the development of a pediatric clinic to address these events so they do not manifest themselves in adulthood. Generally speaking, this project has taught me that researching any topic requires dedication, time, and that utilizing multiple resources can enhance and increase the depth of your work. The library was a very effective place to find a variety of subject guides and advanced search tools that expanded the reach and potential of my research efforts. My life as a student has also been impacted considerably after completion of this paper thanks to the library resources. The information I learned from this project has allowed me to confidently pursue development of a new mobile pediatric clinic for pediatric populations in Sacramento County. I've presented this work to a variety, in a variety of settings, and so far our project has gained traction with pediatricians, 
schools in Sacramento and students at our university interested in making an impact. Not only this, but it has collected enough merit to gain the support of donors and sponsors. The skills I learned from navigating the library resources has made me a more confident and competent researcher as well. I hope to have a career in medicine that combines healthcare and research together. So I definitely believe that the knowledge and skills I've gained through this experience have further prepared me for that future aspiration. Finally, I'd like to thank Norma J. Lang and the Lang family for making this award possible, as well as my UWP instructor, Professor Oliver, for writing me a nomination letter and supporting my work in inside and outside of his course. I'd also like to thank Beth Callahan and Jessica Nosbaum and the rest of their team for arranging and organizing the ceremony. And finally, I'd like to thank my parents for being supportive of, of my endeavors and ideas. I'm truly honored to be a recipient of this award and I am thankful to have been considered. Thank you so much for coming and attending. Thank you, Tara, great job. Yay. Our second place winner in this category is Vincent Pan. Vincent's project was completed in summer 2019 for his undergraduate writing program, Writing in the Professions Science. Vincent's sponsor is Don Donald Meisenheimer, who is a lecturer in the university writing program. Let's hear from Vincent. Hello. Okay. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Vincent. Uh, in an assignment for GWP 104E, I wrote about the function of Ziba strike. Um, so these zebras, they have these uh, really stunning uh, black and white stripes on their body, and uh, ecologists and geologists have been wondering, well, uh, why do they have that uh, for, for uh, centuries? Um, so in particular, I focus on two hypotheses developed uh, relatively recently, um, the parasite avoidance and the thermal regulation hypothesis, um, and at that, at least uh, as, as of a few years ago, have been completely fall out of fashion. Um, in brief, uh, there was some controversy over the comparative study published about five years ago, and it is unclear how to best uh, interpret the data. And um, a couple of interesting studies has been published since, so I thought it would be a good time to reassess the controversy. One thing that uh, really stuck with me uh, during the research for this paper is a comment written by Lev uh one of my favorite ecologists, uh, published in the um, biological journal, the, Linnaean society about how uh, zebra like plants may deter herbivores. And uh, I thought that that's a really cool idea. And um, I definitely constantly think about that. And hopefully one day I, I can test that. Um, one of the most important things that I learned using the library resources is to keep in mind the limitations of the database I'm using. Uh, for instance, the most obvious limitation being that a year index uh, is, is limited. Um, while um, it is not a particular concern for, for this zebra strike paper, the issue has certainly come up when I'm looking for natural history descriptions of species uh, described more than a century ago. Um, as an uh, aspiring ecologist, knowing how to use the library is critical to the success of my career, and browsing library descriptions of, of ecology-related journals is often very exciting and uh, definitely a co constant source of inspiration. I'm very fortunate to have access to the wide array of resources available at the UC Davis Library, and this pandemic has certainly made that very clear to me uh, how much library resources I normally use on a daily basis. And so uh, thank you to the wonderful people who maintain the UC Davis Library function. And I would also like to thank Dr. Don Meisenheimer uh, for improving the draft of the paper that I submitted and the Lane family and the Lane Prize Committee for providing the funding and organizing the prize. Thank you. Thank you, Vincent. Great job. And our first place winner in science, engineering, and math is Jessica Mecaluso. Jessica's project was completed in fall 2019 for her human development course called Longevity. Jessica's sponsor is distinguished professor James Carey, who is in the entomology and nematology department. Jessica. Hi, everyone. So yeah, hi, my name is Jessica, and I'm a senior studying psychology with a biological emphasis and minoring in aging and adult development. So 
the paper I wrote and submitted for the Lang Prize was actually for one of my minor classes. So um, I was required to write a research term paper for this course. And initially I was very daunted by this assignment because I had never written anything quite like it before. Obviously it ended up okay. Otherwise I wouldn't be talking to you all. Um, but my paper topic was on the biological basis of Alzheimer's disease. So I chose this topic because I'm really fascinated by the biological backing of memory as well as how aging, especially atypical aging, can impact memory. So Alzheimer's disease also continues to rise in prevalency because people are simply living longer lives and many people are familiar with this disorder. So I felt that the topic would be very relevant. So as I mentioned before, I had never really written a research paper like this. So it was definitely a learning process. I would say that one of the most interesting things that I learned about Alzheimer's disease is while it can be genetic, it's also often like more often spontaneous, but while they're like some of the genetic aspects are also really interesting. So learning about the different variants of genes and how that impacts like the prevalency of Alzheimer's is really interesting. So like, for example, there's in a gene called the ApoE gene. And if you have a certain variation of it, you can actually have a higher prevalency for late onset Alzheimer's disease. So regarding the UC Davis Library specifically, the available resources really helped me expand my knowledge as a resource researcher. So they're very extensive and I have access to so many different sources. And then also the subject guides were particularly helpful for me because they really helped direct me toward the right databases to utilize like PubMed or Google Scholar. Furthermore, this project really helped me know how to approach finding sources for other class papers. I also utilize these methodologies when finding research papers as an undergraduate research assistant in a memory lab here at UC Davis. Regarding my future, I'm taking a gap year before going to graduate school to pursue either a PhD in cognitive psychology or cognitive neuroscience. So I know that I'll spend the upcoming summer reading dozens of research papers and even more in graduate school. Because of the UC Davis Library, I feel confident in navigating and delving into this academic scholarship beyond my undergraduate career. Thank you so much to Dr. Carey. I am also a member of the McNair Scholar Program like Susanna, I'd like to thank them as well. The UC Davis Library, the Lang and just the Lang family for your support. And then also thank you to my parents for listening to me talk incessantly about this project. <laughs> and it's cool that it got recognized. So thank you. Thank you so much and congratulations, Jessica. Thanks everyone for joining us today. It's been a pleasure to share the great work our students are doing here at UC Davis. On behalf of the library and the Norma Jane Lang Prize for undergraduate research, in, um, in research information, have a wonderful evening. Let us end with a virtual round of applause.